Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Cross Canada Roundtable, The Future is Green, an update on sustainable production presented by William F. White International at the 2022 Members Lounge. My name is Rhiannon Seath, and I'm the Senior Coordinator of Programming and Membership here at the Academy. Members Lounge 2022 is presented by the Canadian Media Producers Association, which represents hundreds of Canada's independent producers. They are the people who make the shows and movies you love. Members Lounge 2022 is also made possible with the support of our programming partners, Directors Guild of Canada in Ontario, William F. White International, Bell Fund, The Foam Bell, Boat Rocker, Nabet 700M Unifor, Telephone Canada, La Banque Nationale, Le Bureau du Cinéma et de la Télévision du Québec, The Independent Production Fund, Panavision, and La Sodec. A reminder that if you have any questions for today's speakers, please put them in the Q&A and we'll save some time for those at the end of the session. And with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel. First, we have David Hardy. David is the Vice President, Sustainability and Stakeholder Affairs at William F. White International, where he works to embed sustainable best practices into the fabric of the company and participates in initiatives that help better inform all levels of government of the value in supporting a sustainable film and TV industry. Next is Smiley Karana. Smiley is the Real Green Sustainability Lead at Creative BC, where she is working to help the industry transition to a circular economy. She has worked on a number of productions in a variety of positions, including sustainability coordinator and hosts a podcast focused on environmental sustainability. And finally, we have Valerie Daigneault. In 2020, Valerie joined the Quebec Film and Television Council, where she currently manages the activities of the audiovisual cluster. She's also president of the governance committee of Synthèse pour Image Quebec. Now I'll pass it over to our moderator for today's session, Leticia Kagwa. Leticia helps content creators tell compelling stories while minimizing their environmental impact. She recently joined the CBC as their first ever environmental sustainability lead, where she collaborates with producers to track carbon emissions and implement sustainable production techniques. She is also completing a Master of Science degree in sustainability management at the University of Toronto. Thanks so much, Rhiannon, and thanks uh, to the Academy so much for inviting us here today. I know our audience is super eager to learn more about this existential and exciting topic of sustainability in our industry, so let's jump right in. Um, first, I'm wondering, uh, maybe we'll start with you, Smiley. Where do you see the biggest opportunities to build momentum when it comes to greening our industry, both in the short, short and the long term? Uh, good question. That's a big question, too, to start off with. Um, biggest momentum, you said. Um, I think the power of collaboration is huge, and we're seeing that um, all the more in Canada. And uh, through that, through the collaboration and partnership with each jurisdiction and organization, we're able to create those incentives. And, uh, you know, the biggest incentive of it all is that, you know, we're striving for a better planet um, and a sustainable present and future um i yeah i don't know if uh, can you repeat the question yeah sure i was um wondering about building momentum um building when it life. comes to green yeah because there's a lot of great uh efforts and a lot of great initiatives going on um mm -hmm. and so i was wondering how you think that that could be propelled and you mentioned partnerships so i know david also has a lot of experience in that um so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Building momentum. Um, I think definitely um, we're all aware of what's uh, happening in the world. We're all experiencing the effects of climate change and um, everybody wants to do the greater good. And so I think through um, the different types of momentum, whether it's, you know, you're working on set as a crew member and what you could do in your role in your department or you're a studio executive or a labor organization, each um, aspect, there's different layers um, and levels of what you could be doing. And then the reward in itself is, you know, like I said, um, you, we're getting that better <laughs> future and sustainable practices in our industry. Absolutely. Um, David, I was wondering if you had anything to add to that specifically um, from the partnership standpoint that Smiley just mentioned. Sure. Um, 
and, and if I could just quickly jump back for one second and I'll, I'll, I promise I'll talk about partnerships at, uh, as we go, but I just think that we're in a time where um, the, the value of a movement has never been more important. Um, you know, we've seen movements come and go over, over dec the, the past decades in the 20th century and how they changed society. And, and I think that the, the most important thing right now for me in terms of keeping momentum, we've started to build some momentum around sustainability, um, but, it, but it's, you know, that we're being deflected by a global pandemic, we're being deflected by a war that threatens to engulf, you know, Eastern Europe and, and, and the rest of Europe in, in, a, in a horrible conflict. But underlying everything else is, is this constant existential uh, you know, crisis that we're in, that we need to keep moving forward. We need to keep the momentum. We need to build movements. We need to, you know, we've got a, uh, I guess she was 16 at the time, Greta Thunberg started skipping school and going and, and protesting and, and look what's happened in the wake of that. We've got the ability to, to build that kind of momentum around the sustainability movement and our industry is well positioned uh, to, to be influencers for for global um, sustainable efforts or sustainable best practices. And in terms of partnerships, you know, this, this panel is a perfect example of how we have all competed with each other in all sorts of manners over the last number of years for work, for, you know, to, 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 to be most attractive to the, uh, out, the outside world that is bringing production to, to Canada. And we, we always will be to a certain extent, but what we've been able to do is put that aside and talk about common themes that have, that impact our industries in every province and every corner of the country to work you know collaboratively and and we're just kind of really starting the collaboration between the various provinces that have um, you know a, a, a kind of robust film industry and and that are looking at ways to to change how we operate our uh, do our our you know hour by hour jobs on film sets but to me, I think there's a great opportunity to build on that national partnership and, and make Canada the greenest um, jurisdiction in which to create filmed content. If I may add uh, something, I think I, I agree with everything that David said, and I think with the National Green um, Committee that we've put on with of the provinces that are working on a sustainable program or approach. This is such an amazing committee because we can share all the, the good practices, what work, what doesn't work, what are the obstacles, what are our needs, and we are just sharing. And this is, I think this is the momentum that we've put on, like to come back to the question, because since COVID, like we've seen what is the, impact on the environment when we reduce our impact on it and what how is is this this the, the the environment is growing and is going better and so how can can we take this momentum and pursue it uh, on a long-term commitment so it's really a joint effort and we need like we know what can be done in our provinces like on in each other uh each provinces but as a whole as a country how can we be better greener and more effective on this uh on this matter yeah thanks so much for bringing up that committee actually for those who aren't familiar do you mind just giving a little background as to who's involved and how that committee got started Maybe um, smiley? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the National Real Green Committee is uh, co-chaired by uh, Julie Bernard of Creative, Creative BC and Kristen at Ontario Green Screen. And it's a committee where we bring together all the national organizations, film commissions and partners to come together and, and speak about how can we take the collaboration and partnership further and um, share the resources and information and knowledge with one another. And we also license tools from our amazing partners at Albert, um, such as the Carbon Calculator and the Climate and Sustainable Production Training Courses 
And together, we also are developing in the process of developing a national Rio Green certification as well with the collaboration of all these partners. Um, so there's about 29, I believe, uh, or maybe since uh, last I checked, 30 partners that are now sitting on this committee. Um, we meet quarterly and um, we have a page on our new Real Green website as well, dedicated to National Real Green. So really making it the one-stop shop for all things like resources, no matter where you're filming in Canada. And like David's point, like setting the tone for our national uh, sustainability efforts. So anyone coming into Canada or looking at Canada, uh, we're united and we're together and creating great progress. That's so exciting to hear. And uh, actually, you mentioned the Albert Car Carbon Calculator, which is a tool I'm intimately familiar with because at the CDC, as many of you have probably heard, um, we have recently um, mandated the use of it to keep track of carbon emissions um, from indie and in-house productions. And so as tools like this begin to kind of become more pervasive in our industry to sort of standardize sustainable practices, I think it's actually really important that we don't keep reinventing the wheel and we really start to kind of aggregate our efforts. So it's really exciting to see something like that take off. And so I was wondering um, if you guys are seeing any other tools and similar initiatives that are being used to standardize sustainable production. Maybe um, David, we could start with you. I think that I think that some of the the fundamental pieces are the cal the carbon calculator, and as as those of us in the industry know, uh, you know, there's not there's not a hundred percent consensus around the calculator. We've still got clients that come into Canada from the U.S. that are bound and determined to use their own uh, calculator. They're close enough, and and really, it's 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 the practice of of measuring. So, you know, the fact that the one's called Peach and one or, you know, Pear and one's called Albert and the carbon calculator, it, it, you know, they're similar enough that, that I think we can call it standard. Um, but training, I think is a, is a, is a huge part and, 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 and disseminating information to um, create a standard approach to how a technician approaches production. And as, as any of you have worked on set know, You've been doing your job for a long time, and you've been doing it the same way. And you've got a you've got a shorthand that allows you to get get a lot of work done in very tight uh, tight time constraints, which is the film industry. So, being able to introduce new opportunities, new methods, um, but that are being practiced all around the world, uh, I think there's a there's a huge strength in that. And when you can you can pick up a phone or you can jump on a, onto a Zoom call and learn from somebody in the UK or the US or 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 France or Germany or or some part of Canada, how do I go about designing my set slightly differently? Or how what materials can I use that are that are a little more sustainable? Or how do I keep things in the flow? That kind of more and more standard approach, I think, will will take hold. Can I just add on to that, that um, everything that David said, and then also to um, really emphasize the point of like having something that works for each region and where you are in the communities you work in, because that's what we're finding where um, as Canada, uh, Real Green, we're trying to push the Albert Carbon Calculator, but again, like David said, more than happy with um, you know, productions or studios using their own calculators as long as we're measuring and, and training. Um, but then to be mindful of being as inclusive as possible. So how can we standardize these, the training, the tools uh, around the world? And we're actually seeing that we, um, like I'm proud to say, and I'm sure my colleague here um, can say too, that the, there, there's an initiative now, the Entertainment Net Zero Accord under United Nations and UNESCO that's bringing together global leaders from around the world to talk about what each of us are doing here in our regions and standardize so we don't need to reinvent the wheel at all, no matter where we are in the world, but really making it work for those different jurisdictions and communities. So um, that's what we're trying to do is like work with our partners across Canada, but across the world as well to bring um, those tools and resources here. Uh, and another thing, um, for the training purposes, like what we're really focusing on this year is climate storytelling. And we're finding that, you know, um, it's not just a discussion that's happening here. We're seeing this discussion come up now around the world too. It's that 
how can we now talk about this on screen storytelling and how that's influencing society and culture and what can we do what's what is our part in this so it's another thing that we're adapting the course that's already existing under Albert and making it work for Canadian audiences and writers and crew and yeah yeah and we're really happy because we are also we've just launched also uh, Albert like a uh, maybe three weeks ago in the Rolling Green program. And we were happy to tra translate it in French also for the French community here in Quebec. And to and we were talking about like this community uh, between all the provinces and the sharing. And we are happy to share like the translation with Albert so that we can share it with everyone that needs it. So that's, uh, that's also a, a great, way to improve this movement and to to work and to standardize those uh, practices and i think that if uh, if i may on training training is the best way to learn it's the best way to standardize some practices and to see that it could be easy to adapt your your your, your work or your your way uh, of doing things and by taking some greener uh, approach greener choice so we've just, um, like uh, yesterday morning, we've just had our first uh, training on the, like on the, the, the good practices, uh, rolling green uh, program uh, guide uh, with one of our um, uh, training school here uh, in Quebec. And uh, it was really well received. We, uh, we, we were happy to have this type of, um, collaboration also with the with the uh, learning industry here uh, in the province so I think it's really we need to involve all the key partners and the key uh, collaborators of the industry so that this movement gets better and gets easier to put on our production. I couldn't agree more. And these are all such great points. Um, David Smiley actually mentioned the United Nations um, Net Zero Accord. And I was wondering if you could describe that a little bit more because I know that you're a big part of it. Um, I was wondering specifically what you see as being the benefits of international cooperative efforts like that and what tangible benefits you see coming out of it. Um, sure. Well, and thanks for for identifying me as as a leader. I am not a leader in this movement. I, I'm standing on shoulders. There are some incredibly smart, passionate, uh, experienced people as that are part of this um, entertainment net zero accord movement uh, at the UN. But I think that you know, I, I I think that anytime you bring together, and this is something that we've experienced a little bit at the uh, at National Green, is that. Um, you know, herding cats is the is the phrase that comes to mind. And you've got so many people who are so passionate and so engaged and so involved in their own communities that um, you know finding that common thread is always the challenge. But you know, you really only have to look look to the environment as that that overwhelming um, you know rationale for for our collaboration and that we we've got to come together but I'm sorry I'm waffling a little bit can you repeat your question <laughs> yeah no problem I was wondering about like the tangible tools that are expected to come out of this because I know there's a lot of great like you said yeah. brainstorming collaboration but what's something yeah. that practical well, that's expected I think to come out? fundamentally there will be uh, uh, you know five points that we hope to find you know find consensus on um, one of them is is a pledge to um, to hit the Paris Accord targets, uh, 1.5 degrees. Um, you know, keep keep the global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees, and to hit 50% uh, carbon emission reductions by 2030, and then the the remainder, the remaining 50% by 2050. You know, I think our industry is positioned to be able to move faster than that, and I hope we will. But you know, I think that we've got a, a wide group and, and a, a totally mixed bag of, of participants in this movement, some of which are individuals, some are or organizations, nonprofits, um, some are multinational publicly traded companies that will 
um, you know, there will come a point where there will be a hard question and decision whether they're able to sign, but they can, they can certainly fulfill and participate in many of the uh, carbon reduction strategies that will come out of uh, out of the uh, the accord, and it is it is a process, and we are engaged in it right now and working towards it. But I think a lot of the um, uh, the fundamental points, it's going to be um, you know sharing of information. It's going to be inclusivity. Um, you know, right now we've got a large part of the world that is that is uh, represented, but by no means is that a complete picture of. The entire global community where filmed content is 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 a thing, and we have to be able to spread that message and 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 you know open the arms wide and bring everybody in that wants to participate and make it as easy for them as possible. Um, you know, down to we we will have at the time of the conclusion of the charter, uh, I'm sure we'll have a whole list of of actions that are are potential things that groups and organizations can can do but i think fundamentally it's going to be that we pledge to reduce our carbon impact by the paris that we collaborate and, and continue to share information um to bring others into the to the fold where possible um smiley i think there are, you can fill in the blanks if there there are a couple of other bigger things i think there mm -hmm yeah um yeah we're creating like a landscape of what what that looks like and, and really to emphasize that that collaboration and involving as many different regions as possible because we don't always see that um these different communities or organizations or people always represented well enough because they may simply not have the like resources or tools to be at the same level as some other organizations of, or other countries around the world so it through this we're really trying to engage as many different um communities and people um and then the plan is like you know we're doing a lot of behind the scenes work right now i'm sitting on the outreach and inclusion committee which is you know integrated into all these different uh, committees created under this accord planning um, and the plan and goal is that by COP27 we'll actually have something to present um, to share with the world that will continue to develop over time but there hasn't been anything like of this sort at all to date uh, something for the screen industry specifically and we're seeing like other industries like the fashion industry um, I can just that's one coming to mind right away that has something like this where there's resources available anywhere in the world and I think there's a huge um, area of like impact and influence simply because our industry is so unique that we could be filming anywhere in the world and so if we're able to engage those local groups and organizations and see like you know especially to help those that don't have the budgets or the tools or the people necessary to push this, but they're still part of that conversation. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's like, it's still a few months of work still to do, and then we'll hopefully by next um, next year's panel we'll have actually something more official to report. <laughs> So that's super exciting to hear about, and I really love the emphasis on inclusion, especially because it is so hard to crack into this industry, especially, yeah, depending on what angle you're coming from. So I love that that's something that's being taken um, into consideration. And David, you mentioned trying to make it as easy as possible, and that really hits home for me because at the CBC, that's something we're trying to really just incorporate into every aspect of our sustainability initiative is trying to make it as effortless, as seamless, as, you know, as straightforward as possible so that everyone can really get to what they want to be doing, which is creating awesome content. Um, so while we're on the subject of collaboration, I was wondering, uh, maybe Valerie, if you could speak to um, how you might suggest that we can encourage collaboration among similar or even competing organizations, kind of like David said, sometimes it's all about kind of trying to become the most attractive option for an incoming producer, what have you, but really sustainability requires all hands on deck. So how do you see us encouraging more collaboration, especially among like unions and guilds and rental suppliers and other comp competing bodies like that? Yeah, um, like I was saying, it, it's really a coordinate effort for of all the industry. Like, if you want to achieve our goals, we need to be together in this. So, like, uh, for example, the Rolling Green program has been developed with three co-founders. So us, the Quebec Film and Television Council, that is like 
uh, they are for all the industries. So all the um, live action, the visual effects and the animation industry as a well. whole. But we work also with Quebec, that is one of uh, the one of the biggest company uh, uh, media company here in Quebec, and is also a, a broadcaster with TVA and have some production studio with Mills. So there was they they were our um, uh, production expert, <laughs> as I may say, and also we we work with the uh, CQEER, so it's the Quebec Council in the environment and that is our like uh, green and uh, sustainable uh, expert on the program so this just to have those key players to begin with was a really great achievement for us but after that we needed to involve the broadcasters all the broadcasters uh, also producers association of workers uh, guilds union schools and each providers that are working with the, with the industry. So we've built like a partnership program to, to come and join us in this adventure to launch this program and to help also um, giving back with some free tools so that the industry and some like Smiley was talking uh, before us for the ones that don't have the budget to put all those great initiative um, in their production. So, the, the, the tools are free and we have now 13 partners and that that are representing all the key players of a production so that every uh, part of a or department of a production can be represented in this uh, program so and also with the training I, I will come back with the training but the training I think is the key now the training that, that we have the the, the Albert training for the Albert tool and that is great and it's when we each time that we we did it it worked well and it emphasized like the 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 the, the, the that is easy to use it but also the other training that we put on uh, it's for the producers and the production directors so to have this kind of effort to go top to bottom so that if they see that they can they do the right, the good, the, the choice of being greener at the beginning of the production, it will go all the way through the chain of command and of production. So this is one of the first steps to, to bring everyone together and to bring like the producers, the technician, the providers in a way that everyone can be uh, useful in this uh, way of uh, of working so i don't know if i answered well your question but i, I think it, that's a that's a global approach it's a 360 approach that uh, everyone needs to see what they can do and what can be done uh, in their own path to, for a greener production if i can just jump jump in for one second on that uh, as as a representative of a private sector company um yeah, we we compete with our our with others in the industry for similar types of of opportunities. But I, I'd like to think that we, in our in, through our competition, we're driving each other towards more sustainable um, equipment and practices and technology because everybody is looking for the next great thing. And whether it's us or our, or our competition, uh, Manhattan Beach Studios or or Cine Lease or anybody around the world. Um, everybody wants to have the equipment that production wants, and increasingly, that's zero emission or the 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 you know the most um, energy efficient or sustainable uh, equipment. So uh, we're driving or uh, driving each other through competition. Um, I'd like to think that we can we can also collaborate uh, in, in certain areas that that you know we're, we're we're we are achieving that through our participation in in different groups. You know, we sit with our com our competition at all sorts of national and international panels around sustainability. Um, so, so I think that there is a little bit of competition. The competitive juices flow, but can can work collaboratively and can can work, um, you know, towards the benefit of of a more sustainable industry. 
Yeah, I agree. And if I can add, when we entered the global pandemic, um, it was similar, like we had to work together, like the whole world had to come together. We were all experiencing the same thing. And yes, each um, where, like, depending on where you're located, the resources that were given to you and what you were um, presented with were different. But all in all, we had to work together to get through it. And we're still in the pandemic, but like how far we've come. I just don't think with the climate crisis, how is this any different than like, why are we waiting until it's a pandemic and we're seeing, like, we're already experiencing the climate crisis already. So it's another thing, we need global support. Like everybody needs to come together. There is no competition. It's ultimately our health and our homes that we're, we're dealing with, right? So I, I love David its point about that competition can be a good thing because if it's helping if it's working for the benefit of you know striving or being the the leader in this movement then yes but other than that I think if, if you're not still having that buy-in or that um, being convinced that this is important and this is something you should consider it's it's just astonishing like I, I think we need to definitely recognize this as a global collaborative um, movement and and take initiative like like individually and, and part of any organization or community you are part of. I couldn't agree more and I think it is incredible how many parallels there are between the pandemic and the climate crisis and that action is needed so immediately it was needed yesterday and so it's exciting to see yeah, organizations, just like you guys are talking about, kind of putting down the boxing gloves and saying, okay, how do we move forward together? Um, and that actually segues really smoothly into my next uh, question. I was kind of wondering how you guys see our responsibilities as professionals and as Canadians to protect the land that we're so fortunate to be able to work on, um, whether that be from a personal standpoint or professional working environment standpoint, just kind of where you see our responsibilities. Um, yes, Miley, would you like to go first? I can, I mean, we brought up training a lot and I just want to bring it up again because we can't emphasize that enough. Training is so important, whether you're training yourself but just education in general. If you don't know what's happening or why it's happening, it's hard to really know what what kind of action to take and so educating yourself and then also offering that to your colleagues and to your networks um that's always the first place i think you could start that's how i started in this too is because i began um just being informed of what's happening and the impact of our industry and then it's communication i think this is a, the second big step you can take is communicate that like with with everyone you know and and talk about it not to be afraid of talking about it in settings where you know it's not normalized just yet um something in the industry where you know it's great that like the four of us are leading this in our respective roles but we're still finding this huge uh percentage of uh you know the industry that's still not just on board yet because they don't know where to start or they're they're not invested in it yet so not being afraid of just communicating and, and speaking up um and i I'll, I'll pass it on to my colleagues here to add to that yeah i think that um every step counts like if you want to begin this journey of uh the sustainable journey is that the little to the big one are important. Uh, you don't have to wait that everything is perfect, that you need that to have this great big expert initiative. I think you just have to begin and just do it. Like if it's only to, to bring your own bottle of water, to have your own, like, but that's okay and it's good and it's great and we just need like if everyone do a little thing this is how we're gonna get greater and greener i think um i think you're i think yeah, taking your question um a little bit a, a slightly different direction i think you asked about you know responsibility, what responsibility do we feel to protect the land that we, you know, inhabit? And um, 
I've been incredibly fortunate to have been from coast to coast and seen all parts of, of this country. And I've traveled a lot in my, in my past and been fortunate to, to experience different cultures and different landscapes. And, and, you know, we are uh, some, some great Canadian songstress, Joni Mitchell, um, wrote, you know, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And it's, it's, it's just mind bogglingly, stunningly beautiful, the country that we live in. And I mean, like literally every part of it. And, and well, maybe with the exception of Southern Ontario, but which is, <laughs> with, I love Southern Ontario, but it's not the most spectacular part of the country by any means. Um, but, but you know, if, if, if that doesn't get you going to think that we've got to do something to protect this. And I mean, in my lifetime, um, you know, I've seen such incredible degradation of the natural landscape. Um, and, 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 you know, the fact that I'm in a position in an industry that has, you know, a disproportionate influence um, against its size and ability to magnify and amplify a message to the world, both through our content and through the way we make that content. It's just, it's just, it's, it's just, we, you know, you've got to get out of that kind of quotidien thing or if you're just, just, you're in that zone and you do the same thing every day, you got to look around, you got to stand up and look around and realize what we have, what we have to lose and how little it will take to, to affect the kind of change that we need to sustain our, our, our planet and ourselves and our, our species for, for generations. And I'm a parent, so I've got a, the added element of, of uh, not wanting to leave my kids with a mess or any more of a mess than I inherited from my parents. But, but um, you know, it's, it, to me, it's just, it's such a personal thing. Um, I've got a, I, I'm in a battle, kind of gentle battle with my neighbor about a tree that he wants to take down in my backyard. And, and I will chain myself to that thing before it comes down. So, um, you know, it's that kind of just, we just have to get passionate about it and, and stay passionate and, and recognize that what we do, we're privileged to do the jobs that we do in an industry that is hard, but, but is rewarding in many ways. But let's, let's use that to our advantage and, and really build on this effort and 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 amplify all of our actions and and kind of keep get to my our color Valerie keep things rolling you know and and pick up the, the momentum. Oh, sorry, Smiley, did you want to say something? I just I want to say I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> sorry Valerie, you can go ahead. Like, uh, same, same. It's, yeah, no, that it's was really great, and and I think also why are we so responsible in this in those action is that we are an industry that people is looking at because of what we do, what what we produce, and and we need to to be a, an ambassador and to be an influencer in a way because the more people's gonna see, even on screen, some sustainable action that is, that are taking, uh, that is part of the story and part of your favorite actor or, the, of a, or in a scene, this is gonna have some influence in their own uh, quotidien, like David, David said. I'm gonna use it, but in their own way of life and see that the, the maybe they, they will be more uh, um, motivated to put those kind of action in their own uh, life. So I think this is our responsibility too, in a way. No, absolutely. Thank you all so much. These answers were very heartwarming and very personal. So I appreciate you sharing um, your perspectives. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes left. So I wanted to ask each of you really quickly, um, in the spirit of empowering our audience with practical takeaways from this session, 
what is one action that you would recommend that anyone can take right away to support greening our industry? Uh, Smiley, why don't we start with you? You always put me first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One action that you could take is, um, I, I'm coming back to education. That's like the biggest, I think, um, power of change is just being educated and educating. Um, and then after that, no matter what industry you're in, what role you're in, if you're in the film industry, what department you're in, I think you can then take that and then really make it work for you um, in terms of like, even with the last like few answers that Valerie and David were talking about, make it, make it personal, like your actions matter. Like if anyone ever thinks that my one, you know, me throwing this one thing in the garbage, it's not gonna affect anything. It will, it, it adds up over time and the influence you will have, you know, over generations to come is it's powerful. So um, just coming back to education, um, continuously learning and and we're used to doing that in the industry we have to keep learning and evolving and it's no different in the in the sustainability movement yeah i was going to say get informed so be there read look and adapt adapt uh, what you see what you read uh, to your own life and to to what is better for you, but like, just, just do, just do something. <laughs> Don't wait. Um, and I, I cheated, and when you sent these questions around, um, um, or, sorry, I've just, I've just put part of the curtain, and everybody now knows that we, we, we kind of knew what we're, we're going to be talking about. But, but to Smiley's point, I wrote, commit to your own green actions. And what I would say maybe is slightly more than that is just don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. You know, go about, go do what you're going to do and don't let somebody say, oh, there's no, that's pointless. There's, do you think you're going to make any difference? Yeah, you will. Mm -hmm. And and the, the power of one becomes the power of two, becomes the power of four, you know, and if my math was any better, I would keep going. But, <laughs> but um, you know what I mean? So just, just if everybody commits to their own actions, then you've got a movement and, and it's, it's awesome. Exactly, we see that in the industry. We've seen that so many times and we'll, we'll hopefully continue seeing that is that one person speaking up, whether in a department or overall in a show, it can, it can sparkle like into this marvelous thing. It's just sometimes just, I think when people are just not informed or educated, they're, they're more resistant to taking that, that change, but I think everybody wants to do the greater good. So absolutely. This is so inspiring. I hope the audience is feeling as motivated as I am because everything you've just said is really, I just feel like it's so empowering and I think yeah, we really need to kind of expand these conversations and talk more, not just to pe our peers, but everyone in our lives, everyone in our industry. And so kind of with that in mind, um, how do you think we can communicate this to cast and crew and to other stakeholders and kind of spread that momentum and amplify the messages you said, David? but anyone can answer. How can we say, what was the question? How can we communicate? Communicate that message of needing to um, build this momentum to cast and crew and various um, stakeholders within our industry and kind of build up that conversation. Um, I can say just get involved, like Valerie said too. Um, you know, we have these amazing initiatives now, if you're located in Canada, like you can go to your provincial film commission and I guarantee there's somebody already that has started the dialogue and you can get involved in, in meeting other people that have been doing the work so you don't have to feel alone or like reinventing the wheel. And if you're, you know, on a show, you're a cast member or a crew member, like David put, just speak up. I think that also just, you know, we emphasizing our point of, um, I just know I, I can speak from experience. That was me on set as a PA that just spoke up and it actually worked because, um, you know, you just can't be afraid of uh, getting out there, but being involved with those communities and organizations and initiatives that already exist will help you not feel alone in this movement and be able to like support and carry on that message and um, continue advancing our work. And, and, and I just wanna say like, 
as we're continuing to learn, we're finding what's the, the focus areas and what are the priorities. Like years ago, when we thought plastic, um, plastic water bottles is a huge issue. And today we're talking about electrifying, you know, generators and power on set. So things are evolving. So definitely just get engaged and then see what you can do to, to push that forward. And, and leverage, sorry, Valerie, I jumped in there. Um, leverage, you know, there are many actors and actresses and producers and directors out there who are really focused on sustainability. And when you find them on your set, leverage the heck out of them and, and use them to help propel the, 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 the production forward. I just a great example. Kate Blanchett was in Toronto shooting a production, um, a couple of productions over the last little while, and she's well known for her sustainability focus. And and you know my I I wasn't I wasn't sadly invited to this particular event, but I think the first production meeting she brought a box of of re of of upcycled mugs and handed them out to everybody, and they were all clean and they just weren't brand new you know production emblazoned mugs. They were already in the system. So finding those those actors and leveraging the heck out of them and and using your own actions to influence talent who can who see you on set doing the right thing yeah I yeah. just oh. oh no go, go ahead Fine. oh I just want to add on to that is that also celebrate those wins like it's so important to then celebrate the achievements and just keep building that momentum on set so when when you have accomplished something or you know you're tracking your waist or like David said like an actor has you know done this great thing like share that with your crew because I think that all just psychologically helps us like feel more positive about continuing to adapt and change because this could be such a depressing movement at times when we just constantly see the bad news and and everything happening um it's to celebrate those personal wins and and you know wins together but then continue continue going forward and i think to have opportunity like the one that we have today that's also a great way of sensibilize and promote what we are doing what can be done and what could be done so it's to 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 continue the promotion the sensibilization the communication we need to to continue sharing communicate 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 better uh, but but i think to have those kind of discussion uh, with our new unions, guild, association, uh, it's the discussion discussion that we have as of now, and so that can be brought in their uh, project and production, and and as Mighty was saying, to celebrate the one and emphasize what has been done, so that we can share with others and that they can see that it's that that everyone could do it also. And another way to, to communicate with, or to bring those practices more and more on the project is also with the young talent, the young, uh, the young people that are coming in the industry and that they are very more, much more aware of what the sustainability is and what we should do. And, uh, we've talked with a young group of people uh, here in a, in, in a school called uh, ATM that is really a, a school in the, the live action production. And they did the project, uh, they did their student project with the sustainable uh, guide and with the tools that we have and with Albert and everything. And we've, we've helped them and now they are motivated and they want to do more and they, uh, they ask some such great question because they were like born with this mentality and this uh, value. So they help us get better and bring the program in another, on another level. So I think the young generation uh, is also another group that we, that to, that needs to get involved in the, our um, our initiative. I I love that. I think that's so important. Is that not only 
the young people to get involved, but listen to the young generation. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. creating space at the table for the young generation, because oftentimes, like, especially in our industry where it's very like um, the hierarchy of like experience and it's understandably so, but sometimes it's easy to neglect the younger voices because of their lack of experience in this industry or movement. But you're like, Valerie's so right. Like we're born into this. I can speak as a young person <laughs> to hear that. We're born into this where we have no other option but to start thinking about our actions and how we live our life and what is the next generation? What are we leaving the next generation with? And so um, definitely just take that like extra, um, you know, the value you have in listening to the, the young people in the room. That's huge, 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 huge. I just thank you for bringing that up, Valerie. <laughs> Yeah, that is such a fantastic point. And also your point earlier about celebrating those wins um, is actually something that I think is connected to a bigger conversation that seems to be kind of gaining momentum right now. And that's behind sustainability awards and green awards and celebrating green production, both behind the, behind the camera, but also green um, storytelling. And so I was wondering if any of you have any thoughts on new approaches that might be um, something we could try to incentivize more green production and things that haven't quite been tried yet, but maybe that's something that you've been thinking about or you've been discussing and among your colleagues and you want to see more of. I just want to, like I mentioned the national real green certification we're developing. I think that's a, the first, like first time this is happening. Um, I want to say North America, um, cause we have the, the great, like just shout out to the environmental media association that do the um, green and gold seals for productions that complete the peach checklist. Um, we're just taking that sort of idea of like, but further. And so we're really making productions accountable through this program is like, you need to be tracking your carbon footprint, that's going to allow the productions and ourselves to know and understand where we kind of sit um, in terms of the footprint we're leaving. And then how can we reduce that, you know, so it's it's a huge component of uh, working towards the certification and applying for it. And then other aspects, we're still in the process of researching, but will include like training and best practices and what you have been doing um, in your, your jurisdiction and on your production um, so that you can get, uh, you can be qualified and recognized uh, through this piece, the certification that will be national. So um, I think that's something that will hopefully incentivize more productions to, uh, you know, be part of and, and take part in. And then um, one day, you know, we, we're kind of throwing this around, but one day, like creating more incentives, like tax incentives or what that looks like. It's, it's years of conversations to come, but uh, we're just getting started. So I think that's the, uh, what I can think of right away that we're developing and we'll hopefully have developed this year, um, mid year. So, and with that, yeah. we'll do awards. We'll do that <laughs> awards. We'll do all that shining light on the production. <laughs> yes, and I think it's really important that we were talking about celebrating our project or people that are putting forward those kind of uh, measures and that are our influencers or ambassador. I, I, uh on in our provinces and in canada also and um in quebec it's we've got the rolling green certification now and it's working well we have now 20 production that has been accredited with this certification and it's uh and and it's just only in one year because we've launched it in april 2021 so it's more than one per month and we are very happy and we celebrate those and those that get this certification. And we are talking now with Smiley and they're, they're the Real Green family and to how can our approach can be involved together and so that we can bring this to another level. And, but this is in our jurisdiction, something that we do and that we hope, and this is something that we talked about also, but that can be recognized on the government level also, and that we can have this incentive uh, for our Purdue production that are taking those certification in their uh, in their projects. So, but that's another discussion. But 
<laughs> I needed to bring it up. <laughs> I'm just going to smile because I've got a slightly different uh, approach. Um, but but I think that I think that it, anything that moves the dial forward that 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 highlights the the good that we're doing and that in that that stimulates others to do the same is a great thing. Um, I, I you know I'm I'm loving the Expedia commercial on TV right now that talks about stuff. You know we've all got a lot of stuff and do we need more stuff? And and I kind of I, I kind of think you know do we really need to be patted on the back for doing the right thing when it comes to the environment and to the planet the health of the planet? And maybe we do maybe we do. And I mean I I've, I've always been one who talked about you know, I work in government, you know, in incentives, that's what we, that's how our industry focuses and how it, uh, how it, how it is perpetuated. But part of me wants to see a, a situation where you don't get your tax credit unless you come, come with a zero emission show or a zero waste show or something like that. And, and this is not me uh, espousing that point of view, but I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there that wouldn't it be nice to think that that there's an expectation rather than we get a pat on the back for doing something that we should be doing already. Um, and, and just before we wrap, I just, I know we're running short. I just want to take the opportunity to recognize the CBC, um, Letitia's employer, uh, incredible leadership in, in its content and everything it's doing around sustainability, that's the kind of leadership that our industry needs. And we need to hear more about it. I mean, it's on the, it's in the newscast, it's in the content, it's in the documentaries, it's on the web, it's in, it's in newsletters, it's fantastic. And I congratulate them. And I just want to thank the, um, the Academy. Um, this is the fifth year, I think, for our sustainability panel. And I, I totally appreciate the fact that they were willing and open, and in fact, I think Melanie Wendell probably recommended it back in the day that we do a sustainability day during the Members' Lounge, and I just want to thank them for their ongoing uh, collaboration in that, and I think it's really valuable and important and, and um, something that we need to be doing all the time. Thank you so much for saying that, David, and I fully agree. It's great to see all these conversations really building up all these organizations coming together and Thank you three so much for your time today and to the Academy for having us. Um, we just have a couple seconds left, so I'm gonna throw it back to Rhiannon. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much uh, to everyone. Thank you, David, for the show, but thank you, David, Smiley, Valerie, and Letitia for today's conversation. And another thank you to our partners at William F. White International for presenting the session. <laughs>